This portion of the video is to demonstrate the examination of the thyroid gland. So again, we want to start with inspection. So we want to look at the anterior neck, see if there's any evidence of masses or asymmetry. Um, also, we can ask the patient to swallow, because remember, when swallowing, the thyroid gland rises up in the neck, and again, it might accentuate any masses. So if you could swallow for me. And again, under the normal circumstances, you really won't be able to see the thyroid gland um, uh, or necessarily be able to palpate it fully um, when palpating it if it's of normal size. So again, landmarks are now very important. Also, the location for palpating the thyroid. Generally, we recommend palpating the thyroid from behind the patient, referred to as the posterior approach, because uh, it's easiest to get your fingers in the correct location. So we want to warn the patients you're going to do that. So I want to stand behind you so I can palpate your thyroid gland. So when I get behind the patient, I want to make sure that I warn them they're going to put my hands on the front of his neck. So at this point, the landmarks become very important because since you cannot necessarily palpate a normal thyroid, you want to be able to make sure you're feeling in the correct location. So I'm going to have him raise his chin up to help show some of those landmarks. The large prominence uh, or the Adam's apple in the male is the thyroid cartilage. Uh, females, of course, also have one. It's just not as prominent. That's your first landmark. The second landmark you're going for is the cricoid cartilage, which is just below that. However, I don't want to do the exam with his head extended like this because that tightens the skin and muscles in the front of his neck and makes the examination more difficult. So I'm going to ask you to bring your chin forward for me and do the exam with the head either neutral or slightly flexed forward. So I'm going to palpate for the thyroid cartilage, which again is the large prominence with the notch at the top. I'm going to palpate below that for the next large ring, which is the cricoid cartilage. The isthmus of the thyroid gland is then inferior to that, so it is actually quite low in the neck. The biggest mistake we see with students evaluating the thyroid gland is to palpate too superior. So now I want to feel for the isthmus of the thyroid gland and see if I can palpate it over the trachea. Then I want to palpate the, the two lobes of the thyroid on either side. The thyroid gland is deep to the sternocleidomastoid and next to the trachea, not superficial to it. So you actually have to palpate quite deeply. So this will actually be slightly uncomfortable for the patient, though it should not be painful. So you want to make sure that you press your fingers deeply between the trachea and the sternocleidomastoid and palpate along that area for the lobe of the thyroid. And then do the opposite side with the same motion. It should almost feel as though you are moving the trachea slightly to one side or the other. Again, it should not be painful for the patient. Now, with my fingers on both th lobes of the thyroid, though not as much pressure as I was applying when I was doing an individual palpation, ask the patient to swallow. Could you swallow for me? Again, this will raise the thyroid up into, in the neck and have it run up underneath your fingers. If there's any masses um, or nodules, it'll make them more palpable for you.